Clap your hand for Jesus, somebody. Come on and bless the Lord up in here. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, it's just good for us to be here. Amen. Any time that we can come into the presence of the Lord, it's a blessing. And we thank God for allowing us this, this honor and this privilege to be able to come before him in this last and evil day. Amen. Just to hear something good coming from the word of God. And I don't know about you, but every time we look at the news and the things that the current events that are taking place is letting us know that Jesus Christ is soon to come. The coming of the Lord is at hand. Amen. When people are being deceived into believing that they got plenty of time. But let me tell you something. When you look at life and Isaiah said it's just like the grass of the fields. Today it is and tomorrow it withers away. And it was James that said that life is like a vapor that appears for a moment. And then it vanishes away. It's not saying, it's not guaranteed that you and I are going to make it to the next hour. It's not saying that we're going to make it to next, to tomorrow or next week. Everybody have all these plans and people are getting prepared for Black Friday. And then they, they Black Friday might be spent in hell. And that re, that gonna be a, that's going to be a real Black Friday. I mean, if people have all of these plans, but it, does, it has nothing to do with God. And it's, the, it's God that gives life. And it's God that is in control of each and every one of our lives. It's God that can say live and you will live. And it's God that can say die and you will die. And, and so every, every trip of the train, even as I speak right now, somebody is stepping out of time into eternity. Young folks are saying that I got plenty of time. Some young person is dying. Right now, stepping out of time into eternity to stand before God and to be judged of the deeds done in their mortal body, whether it's good or evil. Listen, I want to call your attention real briefly to the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter. Paul made this statement in verse 13 and said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. You can be seated. I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. But I want you to look at it from this perspective. You and I can do nothing without God. You can't do anything without God. And if I can do all things through him that strengthened me, that's with God. How in the world do I expect to achieve and to succeed in life Without God. You know. We are bound to make shipwreck. With our life. Without God at the helm. Of our life. With leading us and guiding us. And instructing us. Teaching us. In the direction in which we. Should go. You know. We have an adversary out there. That has come to. Do three things, and that is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But it's Jesus that has said that I've come that you might have life and that more abundantly. And it was God that said, listen, I said before you life and good and death and evil. It's your choice. And so 
when we look at how gracious God is and how loving and kind he is, and don't forget he's omnipotent, he's all power. So God, and I'm saying that in reverence because God can make us do anything that he wants us to do. But he said, I'm giving you the power to choose. So at the end of the day, when you stand before me and I pronounce my judgment, whether you hear me say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter down to the jaw of the Lord, or whether you hear him say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. So either way, it was your choice. It wasn't something that was forced upon you. It was a God-given right to choose whether you want to do the right thing or you want to do the wrong thing. But I want you to understand something. Paul said, if we will go back and look at Paul's testimony in Romans 7, Paul said, prior to having Christ in my life, he said, I was religious, but I was still hell bound. Paul said, I was, uh, I was a church member. You, in, in matter of fact, I, I, the church that I attended, that I was associated with, was not a liberal-minded church. Our church was of the straightest set. He said, listen, concerning the law, he said, I wasn't just going to church, but I was doing what the, what the law said. He said, concerning the law, I was blameless. But then, I came in contact with the truth. <laughs> I came in contact with the truth, and, and I found out that I, I wanted the truth. And he said, I counted all things but dumb, that I might win Christ. Even though I sat at the feet of one of the greatest Teachers of that day at the feet of Gamaliel. I still count that as dung that I might win Christ. And so, you know, that's a powerful statement because Paul considered it a privilege to be able to hear the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ, to have an opportunity to escape the damnation of hell because of a loving God, a caring God, that gave his son for you and I. That we do not have to perish. But have everlasting life. And see let me tell you something. For the most part we never say Lord. Thank you for providing a way. For me to come out of sin. <clears throat> oh, there, it, you can get a car. You can get a house. And we're going we're gonna to credit God for that. God bless me with this. And God bless me with that. But God also bless you with the opportunity. Of receiving eternal life. But people are saying, you know, you know, you, you, this is what they're saying. You know, in my day, they say, let the good time roll. And this is what the, the people are doing. They're letting the good time roll. They are hard and harder. The Bible said in the days as it was in the days of Noah. So shall it be in the, the coming of the son of man be. He, listen, they was marrying and giving and marrying. They were drinking. They, they, they were partying. They were just partying up. Until Noah entered into the ark and the door was shut. Now that the, that, that in other words, they were saying all the hope of us being saved is now gone. Because for the space of 120 years, Noah cried out to get the people ready because he's saying it's going to rain. And the same thing that he echoed saying it's going to rain, somebody took it lightly. And just like we're saying that Jesus is soon to come. And somebody said, ever since our father fell asleep, all things continued as they are. But let me tell you something. Every day, every moment, every second, every hour, Jesus Christ is getting closer for his coming. And people are distancing themselves from the things that are most important. And that's having a relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, people are not preparing for heaven. They're preparing for Christmas. They're preparing for Thanksgiving. They're get, they getting ready for turkey and dressing and all of this stuff. But they are not preparing themselves to meet their maker. And then you got to understand this time, the first time Jesus Christ came, he came to be a savior. But this time when he come, he said, behold, I come quickly 
and my reward is with me to reward every man, every woman, boy, girl, according to their works shall be. Every, the, the life that you live is going to determine where you and I are going to spend eternity. Though they live holy and righteous and godly, in other words, though they are living a life that please, that's pleasing unto God, don't spend eternity in heaven. But those that are living a life contrary to God's will, contrary to God's word, go spend eternity in the pain and the agony of hell's fight. And it doesn't make sense for anyone to go to hell when life is at their disposal. And he has made it available so you can escape all of these things, all of the punishment. You know, when you think about the rich man when he died, the Bible said in hell, he lifted up his eyes. Being in torment, hell is not another place where they're getting down and partying. Then nobody is smoking dope in hell. They are not jamming in hell. They, then nobody is dropping it like it's hot. <laughs> Even though it's hot. <laughs> y'all ain't y'all not gonna talk back to me up in here. You know that they that nobody is dancing and prancing. No, no, but it's torment in this place. And, and this is the, the rich man requested Father Abraham. Could you send Lazarus that he may dip his finger in water and put it on the tip of my tongue? Why? Because I am tormented in these flames. And nobody that don't have any best friends in hell. Everybody is worse, worse enemy because everybody is tormented. But let me tell you something. Jesus Christ, God's son, God incarnate, has come, bled, suffered, and died, gave his life on Calvary's cross that you and I, the ungodly, might not perish, go to hell, but have everlasting life. What a privilege. What a privilege that God has bestowed upon a people that is unworthy of his love, of his grace that's so amazing. <clears throat> but Paul is saying that I can do all things only through Christ that strengthened me. But I'm here today and tell you that you cannot do it without God. You cannot live this life, this life of holiness and righteousness without God. And this is what people are, are, are trying to do in our religious society. They're trying to live this life without God. Matter of fact, they, they, they didn't left God out of the equation, so they have come up with their own righteousness. And so they're not worried about being like God. They want to be with him, but they don't want to be like him. That doesn't make sense. And see, God's heaven, God heaven is, is, is pure. It, it, you know, it is it, it, spotless. It doesn't have any sin. Walking on the streets of, of gold, it doesn't have nobody spitting, you, you know, tobacco and snuff and all of that, that old nasty spit. Uh, not in heaven. They don't have spit tunes in heaven. They don't have ashtrays in heaven. They don't have no, no place up there you can uh, uh, dispose of Wine, beer, alcohol. They, they don't have no way you can get rid of your, your drug paraphernalia. They don't have no place in, in heaven for that. But they do have a, a, a hell for those that participate in those things that does not please God. The body is not for fornication. It's for the Lord. The body is for, not for you to go out and, 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 and just have sex. The body is for the Lord. And, and, and it was a well been not for sex, uh, having sex. What is the body? Sex was a dame by God. But him and Adam and Eve was not out there just hitting it and quitting. Adam and Eve was husband and wife. For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife. You cleave unto your wife. It's not been married. Sex is not been for a single people. I don't care if you don't ever like it. Now, and, and see, this, this is something that even in the churches, they, they, con, they condone it, even though God's word condemn it. 
sex out of wedlock is sin. And so it, in 1 Corinthians 7, 1 and 2, Paul uh, addressing a letter that was written unto him. He said, now concerning the thing where you wrote unto me, it's good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, having sex out of wedlock, he said, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. So little girls shouldn't be running around now having sex. I don't care how hot they are. Yeah, the parents should not be telling, giving the little girls birth control pills. So I know you're going to go out there and have sex. I know you're going to be sexually active. So huh, take these pills. Pills, they don't have a pill for STD. That there are some of these diseases, I, I don't care how they treat it, you never get rid of it. And I'm not talking about AIDS. I'm talking about there's other diseases. And one of the most dangerous diseases out there is human papillomavirus the virus and, and, you know, HPV. And, and this, is, this is one of the most dangerous diseases out there. And, 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 but nobody wants to address the sin issue. But Jesus Christ, it said you can't do this without God. And if you want to abstain from all forms of ungodliness and immorality, you need the power of God in your life. And you know, and you have people that have one tasted of the heavenly gift of God. They've been filled with the spirit. They've been filled with the power, but then they strayed away. And then you come to, to realize that, hey, I was better off when I had God in my life. Now, when you look at Cain and Abel, Cain slew his brother Abel. And God said, Cain, where's thy brother? He got small with God and said, am I my brother's keeper? And so God told him, say, listen, I hear the blood of your brother and brothers crying out from the ground, vengeance. And, and so from that time, he made his life miserable from that moment forward every way when he lived a life as a vagabond because every way he couldn't you know he was like papa he was a rolling stone he he couldn't he couldn't get nowhere and get settled because somebody was always trying to kill him and so this is what god had, had placed in his path because he didn't got smart with god he didn't got upset a spirit of jealousy came over him because God accepted his brother sacrifice rather than his because his sacrifice was evil. And then when we give unto God, we got to make sure that the... Now, I'm not talking about monetary. I'm talking about in service wise. That whatever we do for God is our very best. We're not giving God leftover. We're not just giving God something just to say we gave him something. But we're giving God our very best. Do me a favor. Look at your neighbor. Say God wants your very best. <laughs> because the Bible when we looking in Malachi. They came and they was giving off and up all kind of uh, old sacrifice. And he said Listen. He said, I want you, I tell you what, you, you offer up that which is blind, that which is sick, that which is, is, is blind and all of these things. I tell you what, go offer it up to your governor and see if your governor will be pleased with that. And so if the governor is not going to accept it, that's a man that's un, that most, for the most part was unrighteous and see if he will accept those type of gifts what you're trying to offer unto him, those sacrifices. And so now he find out that they were offering up God, want to offer up God anything back then. And people want to offer up to God anything now. That folks, can you just imagine how many immoral folks done assembled in the church this morning? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They've been out in the club all night. Somebody been out there doping all night. Somebody been out drinking all night. Somebody been out fornicating all night. Somebody been out there breaking and entering all night. Come on and talk back to me. And now they want to come up there and sing praises unto God. They, they want to act like they got, they really love God. And then they... I'm looking for the, the scripture where it said, oh, every man did that which was right in their own eyes. And, and so did, after everything that...
And so now, when we look at the book of Judges, in which we're going to go there, but every man is doing what is right in their own eyes. And, and so when we look at our church world today, everybody's doing what's right in their own eyes. They done made the, the Bible, the word of God is obsolete in this day and time because people are doing what's right in their own eyes. And, and it said, and we go back to Jeremiah 7, where they come to the point that saying, we are delivered to do all of these abominations. People are doing what's right in their own eyes. This is what it seemed like it's right unto them. It, it seemed like it's okay because we're doing it in the church. And the church, the problem is that we have allowed sin to enter into the church. We have allowed the world, the spirit of the world, my God, to take over the church. It infiltrated the church. We, and, and you know, the Bible says some men crept in unaware. And, and so now this spirit of, of the world has not crept in. We invited it in. And so when the church start going after the spirit of entertainment, come on, talk back to me. That was the time holy men, that when they sought God, they weren't worried about dancing and prancing. They were not worried about trying to get folks to shout. They were trying to get folks to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That was a time that preacher preached, my God, to convict people of their sin. Because until a person becomes convicted of their sin, they will not turn from their sin. And so you got to have a mind. You got to have a desire to present all of you to God. That God can break yokes in your life. That God can can that God can turn your life around. He can wash you with the full of soul. It doesn't make any difference how old you are or how young you are. God's word is for you. And so people, let me tell you something. Every time you look up, they got funerals of young people. And, and somebody want to say, you know, don't let them be an athlete. And, and say God needed a football player in heaven. I got news for you. They don't have a football field in heaven. And if they was a basketball player, they need God need a basketball player. God didn't need no basketball player in heaven. And God didn't need no, he don't need no track star. He don't need no tennis star. These folks are dying without Christ in their life. And they're going to have to stand before God. And they're going to have to give an account of every deed done in them all about it. But now can you just imagine God got the heavenly choir. Now, what, what do we need these sinners down here sing? And not one sinner is going to sing in God's heavenly choir. I don't care how God bless you with a melodious voice. I don't care how well you can sing. But if you cannot live a life that's going to glorify him, you will not be able to stand. You will not be able to sing. My God, with the holy and heavenly choir. Come on and bless him, somebody. But Jesus Christ is on his way back for a people to, to pre that have prepared themselves to meet him. Now, <laughs> Bishop, I hear you talking about a people that have prepared themselves to meet God. The people that know that Jesus Christ is coming. We don't know where, we don't know when, but we know that he's coming. And all of the signs of the time are pointed to his soon return. And the thing about it, He's not worried about a, a, a specific date or time. He just tells us in whatever hour that he does come for us to be ready. And so it, it behooves us to live a life that's going to bring glory to God each and every day of our life. Because Jesus Christ is on his way back and he's going to reward. I don't care if, I don't care if I'm a little bitty child. Somebody said, no, the, the, the little babies go in free. I don't No, that's not the Bible. That's not the Bible. And I don't know where they got it from, but they didn't get it from the Bible. When you go back to Genesis, the sixth chapter, the Bible said that when God destroyed the first world, when God destroyed the first world, only eight souls were saved. There were four men, four women. How do you know there were men and women? Because there were four men and their wives. And so God used those four men and their wives to replenish the earth. But the first world, all the other souls, he started out with Adam and Eve. And all the other souls, know, and he was not there. So Adam and Eve, Noah wasn't there. So it, it was procreation that Noah got there. And th through procreation, now we got all of these nationalities of people. And now somebody don't want to do what God's word said. And so God destroyed the first world. And so I'm saying that to say that, that God destroyed every, every infant, every suckling child, every child that's still on the breast. 
He killed every toddler. Every teenager all the way up into grandmoms and grandpa, God killed them. And you think that's something? When God sent Saul to Amalek, he said, I want you to go down to Amalek and I want you to kill every man. I want you to kill every woman. I want you to kill every boy, every child, and every suckling child. I want you to kill them. That's what God said. And see, people want you to think that God, he, he's, God is so loving and he's so kind. And that he is. But he's, it was God that they said, behold, I'm God. I kill and I make alive. And so that same God that loves us and will spare our life, that same God will kill us from going contrary to what his words say. Come on, talk back to me. And so this is why. And somebody said, well, preacher, you scared me. Well, I'm just telling you what the words say. And, and you know, and I hope you get scared enough to, to get saved. I hope you get scared enough to repent of your sin. It's because you don't want to die and go to a burning hell. But you can't live this life without Jesus Christ. And let me tell you something. And I don't care about all these flamboyant preachers. And I don't care how well they can perform. That's not the anointing. It takes the real anointing. My God, to change individual lives. We're not looking for anointing. Something they call anointing. To make somebody jump and shout. All it takes is just a talented musician. And now that he hit the right key. My God, then the, the folks are shouting. But let me tell you something. It's going to take the right preacher. My God, they're preaching the right word. So our people will live right. Bless him up and heal somebody. Because it was Paul that was saying, at the time he was saw, he, he said, listen, before, he said, I didn't know that it was wrong to lust. Except the, the word said, thou shalt not covet. And see, people don't know what sin is because they're not preaching what the word says. They preach a bunch of foolishness. They preach a bunch of prosperity. My God, they're just trying to please everybody. But let me tell you something. That's, that lets you know right there that you are not of Jesus Christ. The Bible said, even in his preaching and his teaching, the disciples came back and said, Jesus, the, the Pharisees was offended at your sin. Now, said, Herod was offended at your sin. And now he said, listen, you go tell that fox that I cast out devil. Now, somebody going to get offended at the truth. But I don't care who, who get offended at the truth. You got to preach it anyhow. That's why Paul is telling Timothy, listen, he said, you preach the word. You be instant in season and out of season. You preach it when they like it and you preach it when they don't like it. My God, because somebody, my God, don't like the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. Because this word is revealing. This word calls you to see yourself, my God, from God's perspective. When the world is telling you that you're all right. The word of God said your life is filthy. The life that you live, even the Bible said all our righteousness is that the righteousness of filthy, uh, as a filthy rag. And, and so we're not talking about our own righteousness, but we're talking about the righteousness of God, the holiness of God being manifested in our life. And he's coming to wash us. He's coming to cleanse us. He's coming to sanctify us. My God, with his unadulterated gospel. And this is what people are not preaching. They are not teaching. They are not showing people what thus saith the Lord. And people are going to go and stand before God unprepared. Bishop, what do you mean unprepared? Living a life that's not pleasing unto God. And, and you know, and you got preachers that stand up in the pulpit and blood going to be required at their hands. Because they're saying you sin, I sin, and everybody sin. And all of you that's under the sound of my voice that never heard that, do me a favor. Ask that liar to show you that scripture. That says, you sin, I sin, and everybody sin. Because if you sin, I sin, and everybody sin, everybody's going to hell. Because the Bible said, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. 
And this is a, every day you ought to thank God for loving you. Every day that you live. My God, that you get a chance to see a brand new day that you have not seen before. I got the breath still is in your body. You got an opportunity to say, Lord, save me. You got an opportunity to say, Lord, deliver me. My God, from everything, my God, that's in my life that does not bring glory to your name. Come on and bless him up in here because God could have cut you off when you laid down last night. My God, with your sin for sale, he could have cut you off, but he allowed you, my God, to come here this morning. He allowed many of you, my God, you somewhere, my God, you heard you hearing this, so God has allowed you to see another day. And then now you, you can't wait until this is over so you can get ready to do something else. Indulge in some more foolishness. Indulge in some more sin. But Jesus Christ, listen, I want everybody to know that Jesus Christ loves you. But he's, he's angry at the wicked every day. He hates sin. And you got to understand that because of the price that was paid on Calvary, not only for you and for me, my God, that we might not perish but have everlasting life. My God, this is a life that you can't live without Jesus Christ. You got to have Christ at the head of your life. You got to have Christ, not God, walking in you. You got to have Christ talking in you. My God, you got to have the Spirit of God. I'm not talking about a spirit because the world is talking about uh, the, uh, the Holy Spirit, but that that spirit is not holy. My God, when you still practicing sin, you're still participating in sin. Uh -uh, after that, he the spirit of truth has come. When the spirit of truth has come, he going to come. He going to guide you into all truth. And people are saying, uh, all of this junk because they got some kind of made up man made tongue and God they got a, some kind of old fake shout and God but that does not mean that you're connected my God to the true and the living God the God of Abraham the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob it does not mean that you have a relationship with God but oh my God but it, through the spirit of the, his power when it manifested in us that let us know that God has converted our life there's not one adulterous. There's not one fornicator that's spirit filled. Uh, and I'm speaking about the Holy Ghost. You don't have the spirit of God in you, which is the nature of God. God, how in the world you folks saying I'm a, I, I have the Holy Spirit? And let's just talk about this for a minute. Let's talk about the Holy Spirit. The, the Holy Spirit, the, the Spirit of God is the, the very nature of God. Now, and if that residing on the inside of you, let me ask you something. Why are you still shacking with that man? Why are you still shacking with that woman? Why are you still going to the clubs? Come on here and talk back to me. Why is it that you're still drinking beer, whiskey, and wine? Tell me, you, 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 you drinking a little wine for, you, for your stomach's sake. But you got to understand for dying often in infirmity. And God is not telling you to go out there and drink wine. Because the Bible said wine is a marker. And strong drink is raging. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Because the Surgeon General has concluded. That after the consumption of one ounce of alcohol, you're no more so. And somebody said, well, I, my speech is not slurred. So I'm not, uh, I, I'm sober. Let me tell you something. Your thought processes have slowed down. And the, the, the more alcohol you consume, the worse you get. And, and so people think if I just drink a little bit, then it, uh, that's all right. But let me tell you something. It's, I think I read somewhere and it said, uh, it's a little leaven that leaven the whole lump. And, and, and all you, you Christian drunkards that tell me I, I have to cook with sherry, you going to hell. You are going to hell, you and your sherry. You're nothing but a drunkard. But Jesus Christ loved us so much that he came, bled, suffered, and died. And he's trying to get men and women, boys and girls everywhere, my God, to accept him as head of their life. Let me tell you something, and I'm going on record to tell you, living holy, living righteous and godly, living a sanctified life is a beautiful life. I don't want to entangle myself with the yoke of bondage. Anybody glad to be set free from sin? Anybody be glad to be brought out of darkness?
God into the marvelous life. Come on and bless him up and heal somebody. My God, somebody that sucked on cigarettes, but now you're free. I got somebody will bound on tobacco and snuff, but now you're free. You were bound on alcohol, but now you're free. You were bound by drugs, but now you're free. I got you were bound by pornography, but now you're free. And he that the son of man set free and free indeed. Bless him, somebody. And I'm telling you today, look at me. For I have been set free. Anybody else have that testimony? My God, but I'm telling you, I, I do not, my God, underestimate the power of God. And this is what people are trying to say. Uh, no, you can't, nobody can live like that. Not in yourself. I can do it only through Christ that strengthened me. And because God don't give me power over all the power of the enemy. And when the enemy try to come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard blessing somebody. <laughs> it's God that's keeping me. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It was Peter that said, we are kept by the power of God. Anybody know what the power of God is? Our God is not jumping and shout. Our God is kept alive. My God, that's literally leaving you separated from a life of ungodliness and immorality. But it is separates you to a life of holiness and righteousness. And I like this because it does not discriminate. It does not discriminate on your age. It doesn't make how, how, what difference, how young you are or how old you are. And this is what's wrong with our young people. Because they are, they are separating the young people from the holiness of God. They're saying the young people got to have something to do. They do. They got to live holy. Because Jesus at the age of 12 years old, he wasn't at the arcade. He wasn't out there, you know, gun packing, going to school. He wasn't out there selling drugs as a, a, a child. Come on and talk back to me. He wasn't out there shake, 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 shake your rump. He wasn't out there doing that. Come on here, talk back to me. He wasn't out there, my God, courting. They don't say courting like we used to do. They, they, they out there dating young boys and young girls. With their little nasty self, these little hoochies, they, 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 they hot. Want a boyfriend, but they won't clean up nothing. They just as nasty, nasty, nasty. I'm telling you, this is a nasty generation. Not only spiritually, but physically too. That you, you know, people that won't keep the clothes picked up off the floor. They're going to pull off their honors and leave them laying in the floor with your nasty self. And nobody should have to tell you your nasty self, that's your room, and for you to have to get a, to keep, your, keep your room clean. Make your bed up. Bed hasn't been made up since, since you got up from Monday. It's still looking like a pigsty. I don't care if you don't ever like it. That's the parents fault. That's the parents fault. Under, don't buy them, don't buy them nothing because they, they, they sorry, they lazy, and that's a nasty. <laughs> you got a, little, got a little quiet right there. <laughs> Maybe we got some nasty ones up in here. <laughs> yeah, Maybe we got some nasty ones up in here. Boys and girls, you got to learn about to pick up after yourself. You, you want to be, be grown and don't know how. They, they think you go out there and, and flirting around with, you know, little, little boys and little girls. They, they, they think that make you grown. That, that's just show how immature and irresponsible you are. But when you can attend to these things, when you start attending, take care of this kind of business at home. And now when you clean up your, your room and stuff, keep your life clean. So you won't be running around there with little Johnny, little Bob, Sally and Sue. Everybody going to the zoo. You better make up your mind that you're going to live holy and righteous and godly in this present world. Because I want all of y'all look at me. Young people, you're going to die. You're going to have to stand before God. 
I don't have the power to put you in heaven. That preach, that pope, don't have the power to put nobody in heaven. Your reverend can't put you in heaven. Only a life that's pleasing and acceptable in the eyesight of God is going to determine whether you spend eternity in the glory and the bliss of heaven. And so we got to make up our mind. We got to make right choice. Just like you can make wrong choices, you can make the right choice. Come on in and talk back to me. Can I help you right there? Just like you can choose to have sex, you can choose not to have it. Just like you can choose to consent to it, you can choose to not consent to it. You keep yourself unspotted from the world. <laughs> But let me tell you something. Why are you preaching it like that? Because the world don't pass away and the lust thereof. But they that do the will of the Father shall abide forever. I got you need God in your life. I got you need God as the head of your life. Come on and talk back to me. <laughs> and listen, I'm a firm believer in it. Listen, if you're not going to live right, don't go to church. If you're not going to live right, don't go to church. That's not right. No, no, you just stay with me. If you're not going to live right, don't go to church. You might as well to stay out there in the world and go to hell first class. Because I don't understand. This, this is why I don't understand these little muskrat men. Young men running around there chasing cars like a dog with a few rocks. And then you got to go spend three years stint, then another three years, then another seven years, and all of that behind some rocks. And Fast Style and all of them, all of the Ken Lays and all these other folks, my God, they went, to, they, they went to prison for millions. Don't you know that's stupid? You go into jail, then when you get out, you don't have nothing. When they get out, they're going back to millions. They didn't, they didn't spend all that time in prison like you did for some rocks. And that's how stupid you are. You selling drugs for somebody else that living high on the hall. They, they got a nice ride. ride. They got nice rides. And then you out there patenting, now shove and let. Shove one feet and let the other one follow. You patting and turning. Patting the street and, and turning corners. Because you don't have no money, no nothing. All you got is a record with a teardrop under your eye. And wearing that, my God, that's a wound and a dishonor. Ain't nothing, you know, to brag about because you're a convicted criminal. Come on, talk back to me. You got to have a mind and a desire, my God, to turn. Because if you don't turn, you're going to burn. And let me tell you something. It's so sad that our young women don't, don't, don't know how to pick a man. Because if the fathers was really fathers, and, and this is, I, I say this with, you know, the words with sudden reluctance, because this is the problem in our, most of our home. We got an absentee dad. And uh, you know, as, there used to be most of, all of that fall fell on dad, absentee dad. Now you got an absentee mom. My God, they chasing drugs. They choosing drugs and the immoral life over their children. And dad, that they can, dad is a part-time dad at best. All he did is brought you into the world. But he has not provided anything for you. He hasn't been there to nurture you. He hasn't been there to give you those things. My God, that's essential for life. Being an example of a man. You don't want Junior following you with being a criminal. This my son. This my son. Now I just want to ask the son, what are you doing for your son to help your son? Because they, I don't care what you tell the children, they they gonna follow after what they see. They gonna model themselves after what they see before they'll do what you say. And so this is why we got to be in a godly example before our children. This is why young girls need a godly father that 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 knows how to love their mother and to treat their mother. So that when they decide one day that they want to get married, they don't want a bomb that's out there got a, got a fake grill on. Got one of all of them old, old, old chains around their neck. They fake. 
And so, all that, you know, that junk gonna turn his teeth, he, he gonna really have a serious tooth condition because all that gonna do mortify his teeth. And somebody looking at somebody with some wheels, I want somebody that got a job. You want somebody that got, that, that got a job that has insurance. You know, you don't want nobody running around that's, you know, on dope. And this is the, these are the type of bomb that the young ladies are going after. They're going after somebody that can't take care of baby. Going after somebody that can't take care of baby. That if it, they, they don't have a job, they, they, they're not going to work. They're just a bomb. They're just a bomb. They're just a bomb. That's right, mom, go get your daughters, go get your sons. Let, let, let me run by that again. Because they won't listen to you, but maybe they might hear the bitch. You just a bomb. You want to lay up, don't, don't want to do what your mom tell you to do. All you want to go out there and run after Charlie and, 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 and all these other bombs. They, they, they can tell you more than what your parents can tell you. And all they are a bunch of crooks and criminals. And so you, yeah, you know if you're doing what they say, you're following out there doing, you're just going to be a crook and another criminal. Come on, talk to me. And so you, and then they're messing up your daughter's life. These thugs. Young lady, pay attention to your parents. That's teaching you right. Because you got some out there, they encouraging you. You got fathers that encourage their son. You know, go out there and sow your seeds while you're young. Until they, until they get caught up with some sexual transmitted disease. And then they're they going to regret that they told them that. Your daughters are, are going after these things. But so you got to make up your mind that you can live a beautiful life, a holy life, my God, with Jesus Christ at the head of your life. My God, I can do all things only through Christ that strengthened me. And I don't care how, how God blessed Samson's life, my God, in Judges the 13th chapter, I don't care how he blessed it and set him aside as a champion, my God, for the Israelite to fight for the Philistine, fight old, the, the slay, the Philistine. But I don't care how powerful he was. He still went contrary to what God word said. God raised him up. He, not only did God, God told, now watch this here, this is prenatal care. <clears throat> he told, Sam, told Samson, mom, and it's amazing when you're looking at, they never mention it, her name. They talk about Manoah, his dad, and, and say his wife. But they never mention her name. But anyway, <laughs> it tells her that God gave us specific instruction. You are not to drink any wine nor strong drink. Now, this, this is prenatal care for today. So you're not to be out there sucking on cigarettes. You're not to be out there using drugs. You're not to be out there drinking alcohol and stuff. We ain't carrying these babies. And so the baby wind up with some type of deformity. I don't care if you don't ever like it. And but see, they, 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 this is why they don't, they don't seek no, no prenatal care. They're not going to the doctor because they know they're not living right. Then the first time they, they know it's about time, then they're going to rush to the hospital. And then you wonder why God punishing ain't God punishing you that those are the bad choices. Those are bad choices. Come on, talk to me. And, and so I'm telling you what's healthy for you. I'm telling you, you what you need to do is do the right thing. Do the right thing. Young people, keep yourself pure. Keep yourself from fornication. Keep yourself from all of this ungodly. Keep yourself from gangs. You want to know what a real man is? A real man is not walking around there tattooed all up and, and, and got toting a gun. A real man is one walking around there and I got, got a pan pulled up and got a jaw. And he got, he got a place to stay, and he got wheels. Not somebody, he, something that he done stole, but he done bought him a car. And so if he, can, he don't have a home, he don't have no car, he don't have no job, you don't have no business with that bone. Did say don't care if you don't ever like? <laughs> you don't need somebody that's going to show up on, on Christmas. The only time you, you so-called see the baby daddy, his birthday and Christmas. Then he come bring, bring us and go buy some more high dollar tennis shoes. 
I'll, I'll buy something, you, you know, and because you ain't going to see me no more until your birthday. And then next Christmas, if I'm not behind 